Hey there, in this video I'll be going over how to scrape LinkedIn jobs um, for any type of role that you are looking to keep an eye on. This can be done um, as a business or even as an individual if you're looking to apply for some jobs and you don't want to be manually always reviewing the different job titles or different jobs that are being posted. Um, this is a solution that can work for you. Um, but in this specific video, I'll be showing you how to use this as a company and how to leverage it for your lead generation efforts. Um, and to give you a little bit of context, my name is Will and I run Breton Digital. And what we do is help B2B businesses put in place cold email campaigns so they don't have to worry where their next deal is coming from. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. So the entire process starts on a platform called Appify. So here I've created um, a task based on the advanced LinkedIn uh, job scraper, um, and I'm specifically looking for SDR roles. Um, so what I'll do is I will show you the URL that is being used for this search. So it's based off LinkedIn. So what I did was just go onto LinkedIn, pull up the jobs, um, put in the location that I'm looking for. I also applied most recent um, just because the most relevant sometimes glitches a little bit. And in my specific use case, I'm pulling every single 24 hours. Um, but the actual work that I'm doing is being done on a weekly basis, which I'll explain more later. So yeah, past 24, most recent. And then the way the search works, it's as you can see, it's like quotation marks for the keywords that you're looking for as the titles or the um, like the, the title of the job posting or inside the description. Um, and then as I go through, it's like identifying leads, B2B sales, corporate sales, um, SDR, BDR, sales development rep. So pretty thorough search. So once you're done putting in all the filters that you're looking for, you just copy the link and then you'll go into here and paste it. Um, for myself, I've decided to turn on scrape more details and turn on comp scrape company details. Um, and I'm not putting a record limit here, but you should know that LinkedIn cannot scrape more than a thousand um, job postings. Like this search will always be capped at a thousand, even if there's more than a thousand. So it's also one of the reasons why I'm scraping every 24 hours and not on a weekly basis. But if this was the case, you would have to find ways to segment your list even further. The best way that I found is to put less keywords in your main search and just have multiple tasks running at the same time. So for this task, um, we have this, and then as you can see, um, it just runs on its own every single day. Um, and one way for the, like, just checking, like once a week, just come in here and check if any of these are consistently, like the runs are consistently hitting a thousand results. And that's a sign that you need to create, um, a, another search to help, um, divvy up all those records. So what happens here is this campaign or this scrape uh, runs and then it automatically sends to our make.com automation to complete the rest. And the way you would schedule a task like this is um, right over here. I will move this right over here in schedules. You'd press here and then you can select which uh, task you want to schedule and at what frequency and all that. So that's how you would do it. And then you connect the webhook to that task and you will. Um, then need to build something similar to what I have here. Um, so starting off with a watch task run, so you'll integrate that webhook. I'm um, in here, you can see finished uh, SDR scraping. And then what we're doing is, let me go into here, just to give you examples of what the data looks like. So as you can see here, um, where the campaign, or sorry, the scraping is done. And then in here, we are pulling the data set. So, um, you need to put in this default ID from this first row and then have um, the max limit. And that's sort of all the filters that you need. And then you'll just get a bunch of different outputs of bundles. Um, and then what we're doing is aggregating all of them to fit our, the format that we're looking for. So the format um, is called an array. So we need it to spit out that way so we can um, get this automation to be as cheap as possible. So what we're doing is square bracket, comma, company name, and we're just following that for all the different columns in the spreadsheet that we're looking to paste it into. Um, so this is what this looks like, and these are the filters that I that I want. But as you can see over here, like there's a bunch more data that you could be pulling. 
um, if you wanted to, um, but for me, those aren't really, those don't really change anything for me. So I'm just going with the, the minimum that I need. Then here I'm setting up the, um, the, the variables that I use. Um, so the reason I do this is so on a weekly basis, I'm able to, um, go into the right spreadsheet and also this automatically filters. Cause as you can tell, um, if the week or just to finish this workflow. So like in Google Drive, then what we're doing is checking if that week and year already exists. If it does exist, add those records into the previous um, spreadsheet. If not, create a new spreadsheet based on my template um, and bulk add them. So as you can tell, this entire run took six operations. And for if we were to do this normally, um, like as you can see here, um, like following the normal workflow, this would have taken 222 um, credits, which is a lot more expensive um, and adds up very quickly if we're doing this on a daily basis and if the searches are even bigger. So the reason we do this bulk approach and like have more steps in between and aggregate this array is so big picture, it's a lot cheaper for us to run. So what I've done here is I've created a folder in my Google Drive named it like I created my template here, um, which is a very basic, it's just the column names that I'm looking for in the same order as the array that I showed you. Company name, company LinkedIn, employee account, industry, job title, URL, and job posted. And then as you know, if that, um, if the week isn't already created, it'll create a new one and then just automatically add the campaigns or add the runs back into here. So at this point, what I do, once a week, I go into here, I make a copy, or I actually download it as a CSV, and then I'm ready for the next step of the workflow. So, so far um, in the automation, um, to make this happen, I haven't done anything besides just coming into here for the first time in the week and just download the CSV. Then you will take that CSV and you will create a, a workflow in clay to filter out the leads that aren't a good fit for you and the jobs that aren't a good fit for you. So of course this applies to your use case and you might have to add additional filtering. I don't go over that in this video, but I will um, show you how to do the bare bones filtering. So as you can see, we still have company name. Like all we do is in this, you'll just import and then you'll just import that CSV that you have. And then I call them match the name. So company name, company link and URL, company, employee count, industry, job title, URL, and date posted. The first thing I do is clean up the date posted just so I can get a standardized uh, title or dates. And then the first sort of automation that I'm running is getting the domain from the LinkedIn profile. So this is a very cheap way to get the domains without using a clay credit. So for a fraction of a penny, I'm able to get their domain. And then from there, um, I built a prompt to determine if this company is a B2B or B2C company, and I only want to work with B2B companies. So again, for a fraction of a penny, I'm able to figure out um, some reasoning as to why this would be a B2B company and just have the output. Um, and as you can tell, this is a filtered list, like there were a lot more B2B and cannot determine. But just for this example, I just wanted to show you um, what happens when everything goes right. And these are all companies in our ICP. So at this point, then um, we, we know they're B2B, um, then, and that's the condition that we put here, then we pull up the uh, lead magic details. So this is um, a really good data source that pulls a lot of information. And this is just to sort of verify our work just to make sure that it's accurate. Because as you can tell, um, the employee count, like sometimes it's just blank because it wasn't able to pull it from LinkedIn. So we just want to double check here if this job title is accurate or sorry the employee count is accurate so then we have a merge column here so um, pull this unless it's zero or blank and then if not then put in the the enrich lead magnet one lead magic one sorry um and then at this point what i have here is i want to figure out if they're um, an icp for my business um, and I have a run here just to make sure that it's a B2B company and under 100 employees. Um, and this, you 
you'll really have to work on the prompt and figure out what type of things you're looking for. But like here, it's like going through a scoring process and then figuring out what type of business this could be. Then I fed it examples um, of, of what should be outputted. And then at that point, um, output this. And again, for a fraction of a penny, I'm able to figure that out. And then I have just a final check off, just see if it's, I, in this specific uh, campaign, I want to exclude staffing and recruiting firms because a lot of them will be posting the job on behalf of their clients. So I'm excluding those. And then if it's excluded and everything else works, then simplify the name of the company just so we don't get any situations where, for example, row nine component control, a camp company, we just get component control. So we make sure that it's filtered. And what we will do next is you will go press on actions, press find more people. Then you will, will pull all the domains from this step one. And then as well, or I forgot to show you a step. So all of this, this default view is just everything that's working um, completely. But then what I've done is put in filters just to make sure that the companies are actually our ICP and the week number is um, the actual week that we're looking to scrape here. Um, an ICP in my in this workflow is my final step of sort of filtering. So just if this is checked off, it means that everything else has worked. Um, I can't remember what that was. Okay, cool. So yeah, it's my final step. So that's why I'm using it as my filter. It's checked and then the week is good. So you know, go into actions, find more people, make sure that it's the right table. And then we're pulling from the company domain and then make sure that the view is sort of a filtered view that fits your criteria. Then in this case, we will um, just add all of these companies. Um, and you might remember, like I already did the employee filtering that I wanted. So like Clay doesn't offer an option of under or between 100 and anything else. It's so just 51 to 200. So I just put 200 uh, knowing that we've already figured out the employee counts that we have. Then in job titles, you can put in whatever you like. You can put in the levels of the, like the management levels or the job functions of these people or specifically put in job titles that you want or exclude. Um, in this case, I will just do owner, partner, and C-suite to keep things simple. Then I will do a cap of three people per company, which I recommend. And then that would be it for this. So you can preview and see how many people would be in this search. Um, so in this case, because there's only 20 companies that I put in, um, 37 people show up. Um, but because I already did this earlier, I'm just gonna show you, all you would do is press yes, and then you would import it into the next uh, flow here. So as you can see, look, I have 37 here. Um, let's just take one example. So this first guy, Andrew Stern, automatically it pulls all the data that we have uh, that we previously filtered, which is great. Um, then we're cleaning up their first name, last name. And then we're also um, doing something called dedupe. So it's auto dedupe on the, um, right over here, on the prospect LinkedIn URL. So we don't get any duplicates of people. Um, and over time, we wanna make sure that it's the same um, people aren't showing up in our lists and that we're accidentally sending emails to them. So that's why we do that. We pull the domain, we pull the location, employee count, job URL, the cleaned date. And this is where the next step of automation comes in. So we find the work email that's relevant to us or that we're looking for. So we're just making sure that they're an actual person. Um, and then we, through our verification tool, bounce ban, we're checking if this um, email is valid. And then in this case it is, and then adding it uh, over here. So after that, because I just don't want to waste credits on normalizing job titles, but like, again, it's like extremely cheap. It's even cheaper to do this than um, the other automations that we've done. I just wait to normalize the job title if everything else fits the criteria. So I can show you down here, like as long as it's a deliverable email, then I want you to normalize it. And then what we do here, just to make sure that we're never sending emails to the same people or duplicate emails, 
I do a lookup record in our main database to make sure that this email for myself does not already exist. And if it doesn't exist, add this campaign or add this lead into a campaign for me. So that is the entire workflow. There's a lot more complexity that you could add, um, especially on the, like initially you could filter the job descriptions and like review the job descriptions and based on your criteria, see if it would be a good fit for you. Um, so you don't have to go through emailing somebody if it's not even a good fit uh, for your business or for yourself. And then as well, this uh, lead campaign here, right? Or adding people to your smart lead campaign. We're able to, um, if you wanted to add criteria, like if you had specific messaging for founders, you could have a campaign for them. If you had specific messaging for HR people, you could have a messaging for them. And you can build your campaigns around that way um, or around the, the prospects. And you could even do locations. Like if the company location is, us or outside of us send it in a different campaign because you'll mention something different and you can do a lot of testing this way but this really saves us a lot of time because we're not sending any emails to first people that already have um, that are already in our campaigns so we don't want to double email them and then we don't have to go into smart lead press all those buttons to add the leads into like download the csv add the leads into our campaign we don't have to do any of that. We're able to just send automatically. And really at the end of the day, we're doing this entire workflow, very simple. We download the CSV, we make a copy. We go into step one right here, import it, it automatically runs. And then we press, we find more people using the, the actions and then we're done for the entire workflow. And that's it for this video. So if you wanted to build something similar, feel free to reach out um, my email um, should be in the description below, um, or you can contact me on LinkedIn and I'm more than happy to send over all these templates and whatever you, whatever else you might need to make this workflow work for yourself. Um, but yeah, I hope you found it useful and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.